so uh, I go out a lot to the dog park. That's where I spend a lot of my time. Uh, it's the summer. It's nice. You get to hang around with uh, other people's dogs. Mm-hmm. You meet a lot of weird dog owners because of this weird social obligation. But um, this one thing happened to me uh, e- the other day. Uh, Diego was playing with the most adorable puppy. And this puppy was incredibly adorable. Uh, specifically because it was only two months old, which is basically the age where you can buy most puppies. This puppy was freshly gotten. It was had just been freshly weaned off of its mother's milk, which is important for this story because as this puppy was gently frolicking with Diego, uh, he started sucking Diego's dick, trying to get milk out of it. Yeah. And... Um, it just filled me with many weird feelings, and that is that is what I wanted to share with you today mm. to that's, start this off. That's a good story, Alex, and <laughs> thank you for sharing that story. What else? What? What? Describe to me exactly what happened. How did it transpire? Um, More details. As- Diego does he gets along well with puppies he's good at adjusting his play style for them and he loves to wrestle so they'll you know jump on him and they'll paw at each other and they'll like grab at each other's neck meat that sounds like my wrestling uh, coach this little adorable puppy yeah (laughs) and it it just sort of just this puppy was able to get under Diego and uh at first, what I thought was regular wrestling, uh, it soon became clear that uh, the jowls of the puppy were moving in a sucking motion uh, in the area where my dog's genitalia was. Uh, putting two and two together, uh, <laughs> this was the only thing it could possibly be. There's no other explanation. Usually, another dog will lick another dog's penis, but they won't straight up suck on it, attempting to get uh, milk out of the nozzle, which this dog was doing, this puppy was doing. Did and this puppy was so fucking cute. Uh-huh. It had such little doe eyes, and it scampered everywhere, and it had soft fur, and it had puppy breath. And uh, and it was uh, uh, just sucking my dog's dick, attempting to get milk out. And I don't know what to do about this. Did the owner of the puppy notice? Yeah, yeah, and we we looked at each other, uh, smiling and laughing at the absurdity, both knowing it, it made us both feel uncomfortable. Yeah, extremely uncomfortable. Uh, I mean, at that point, I feel like you got to pay the owner of the puppy some money. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I should just say, yeah, I, I'm pimping out Diego. That shit's not for free, you know. Mm-hmm. Diego's my bottom bitch. Yep. I take him to this park <laughs> to give to give puppies milk all the time. No, I guess I would pay the owner because the I puppy meant. is giving Diego sexual favors. You're right. But these people were not aggressive uh, puppy pimps. So uh, I was spared that embarrassment. Yeah, well. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, I mean, dogs are very sexual all the time. They're always humping each other. And you just deal with it even though you're embarrassed. Yeah, why are dogs humping stuff all the time? Is there like um? Uh, are there other, they're other just twenty on Maine, you know. Are there other animals that exhibit that kind of behavior? <laughs> like, Do any of your cats ever treat you sexually? I don't. Think... It's not even sexually. It's sort of like it's more of a domination. But what do your cats do? I mean, I think I've had one of the cats wipe poop on me, like vindictively. <laughs> But that's not, that's scatological, <laughs> that's not sexual. I mean, you're not German, so it's not sexual. Right, if I was German, that would oh, have been sexual. that's a real sting to the Germans. <laughs> Good one, Alex. They're the scat fetishists <laughs> up in here. You're, you're not a scat fetishist, you're a cat fetishist. You're not, yeah, well, you're not a cat fetishist. Can't have one without the other. You have any? What's your grossest public experience with any one of the cats that you live with? Well, I could tell you about my grossest public experience with ca- a cat in general, and it kind Give of me. put Give me, me put me off cats for a while when I was a lad, a young boy. I went to a zoo and had myself a nice golden shower, courtesy of the male lion who sprayed the entire crowd. 
It was disgusting. (laughs) (laughs) I cried all the way home, covered in lion pee. (laughs) (laughs) How strong is... Do you remember the smell of the lion pee? It was super strong. Is it distinct? (laughs) Oh, wow. I mean, the most... The only thing comparable is like that stuff that stuff you use to deter deer, like wolf or or fox pee. That's the only comparable smell. Oh my. But and then Yeah, it's basically you know, mm-hmm. it's basically like pepper spray. It's basically like fucking tear gas. Yeah. The only time I've seen something like that triggered me with the memory was Tiger King, because I think that happens in Tiger King. Or he mentions it. Ugh. <laughs> But yeah, that, that oh, happens. Man, being sprayed because so and that turned you off big cats for, and and it turned you off little cats because you were afraid of getting sprayed. I mean, little. The thing about all cats will will spray. Female, male. That is true. They just they'll pee on something and be like, "This is my statement. <laughs> this is my art." This you know. Is- yeah, I think we've lost something as humans uh, in that we don't communicate with our fluids anymore. We still communicate with saliva. We do a lot of saliva communication. I've seen that. But on, uh, on, pee on, communication is frowned upon. On Twitter, I've seen a, a, a new form of uh, fluid communication, which is, of course, the cum tribute. Have you seen these? Cum tributes. Yeah. Okay. That's a fun. no. What? Because uh, I've seen the classic anime figurine come tributes that have peppered the internet since its inception. But right. what is this one? It's similar. I mean, it's similar. It's just you. You have a photo of something, and it's representative of whatever, and and then you come on it, and then that's a statement. Is this a Twitter genre? Yes. Okay. What are some of these come tributes you've seen? A lot. Well, mostly they've tended to be ironic centered around um, okay okay things you wouldn't normally consider to be arousing oh like there's one like some rose emoji guy has one of nancy pelosi with like and it's not cum it's like milk of magnesia or like a water and cornstarch or something like that they'll often do it to yeah they'll often do it to express contempt to male twitter users they'll print out a picture of their avatar and then take a picture of cum on it as their response because it's the argument that makes the most sense. <coughs> yeah, I th- so we have revived um, at least, but it's a simulacra of cum. It's not actual cum. It's not actual cum unication, but rather e-cum unication. Well, there are... There, uh, there t- I, what I want to do is... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I want to start jizzing on people in real life in order to express my feelings. I feel <laughs> like the internet has deadened our resolve and isolated in this way that we can't spray. We we cannot spray like the animals that we are. And now, even, there are Photoshop filters to just make it appear that you have, that you have ejaculated on something. So... It, right. It may it's a, not it's even a be a meme template. It's it, right. There's now. There's just a template for you to come tribute. <laughs> Nothing is real anymore. <laughs> I, man, that is the. It is truly the insidious nature of capitalism that pervades everything that we have, even mass-produced ironic come image macros, that has even become the subject of like this joyless. <laughs> Gutenberg press of internet misery. <laughs> yeah. Now we do the come tribute meme to do the come tribute meme. It is the source of our magic. Like, I post the pig poop balls meme. I don't know why I do it. I just do it as an impulse. You mean that picture of a pig with uh, poop on its balls? That, that yeah, you know, it's a, it's a thing that people, they just want to they just post it because they want to make people feel bad. Mm-hmm. Like for a bad reply or a bad take. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Or or just in general, sometimes I'll just post it to very very innocuous posts. Like twelve jam recipes for fall. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't do that. I I'm not that much of a troll. 
Yeah, I, I just trolled Tums on uh, Twitter. I just trolled the official Tums account on Twitter and suggest different flavors for Tums and then troll them that way. <laughs> like, hey, Tums, pumpkin spice uh, is Tums. There, is now. there an official cum account on Twitter? Yeah, there's an official. No, Tums, not cum. <laughs> oh, I thought you said the official cum account on Twitter. No. Like, at cum. Uh, we are the manufacturers of cum. We're doing the, we're doing the branding of cum, but no, the Tums Twitter is good because I love. I if I I could do a fucking I would do a fucking commercial for Tums because they are better than the g- generic brand calcium antacid tablets. They are. I don't know what they fucking do with Tums, but you know, fucking Johnson and Johnson is an evil conglomerate. Who owns Tums? Uh, I don't know who owns Tums. But yeah, just it's someone evil must own Tums. But fuck that shit. I like that brand. I will do a commercial for Tums. Tums, pay me. Sponsored by Tums. <laughs> what flavors did you suggest for Tums? Coffee. Ah, uh, because because <laughs> seriously, nothing is worse than eating a Tums while you're drinking coffee, and that's when I need them the most. You know, right? And and the minty, chalky the flavor. The mint and the coffee doesn't go together. No, if they could figure out how to make it either a chocolate flavored Tums or a coffee flavored Tums, I would be very happy, and I would be very pro capitalism, and I would stop protesting and rioting and looting because Tums are now. See, I don't think you could do a chocolate or uh, uh, or coffee Tums because the the acidity inherently conflicts with it which is i know is the joke but now you've inspired me i'm thinking about this now so you, you got me thinking about like a caramel tums caramel or something tums. like that yeah pumpkin spice tums something that goes with coffee or a vanilla tums vanilla tums Ooh, vanilla tums mm-hmm. do they have vanilla tums they could they could if they want i'm getting to. my puss is getting a little gravy I'm getting pussy gravy just thinking about it. Oh, yeah? Is it chunky gravy? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting chunky pussy gravy. <laughs> okay. It's just pouring out. <laughs> Better get a biscuit. Just thinking about a vanilla Tums prototype. Better get a biscuit. Send this shit to Tums. Like, send this, like, for serious at Tums. I've been trolling you, but get on this vanilla Tums shit. Because <laughs> they only got the, the mint flavors and then the just bad bad weird fruit flavors the fruit flavors garbage fucking fucking garbage peppermint is the only way to go it's the only way to go i if or if they had a variety of mint it could, uh, if they had spearmint peppermint spicy cinnamon tums i mean it's the candy i eat the most oh my god spicy tums yes spicy tums would be hilarious yeah it's uh, it is the nexus of the universe. If you eat one, you become reality. The spice must flow. because you become the the oxymoronic push and pull, the yin and yang, the Andrew Yin and the Andrew Yang. Uh, who would Andrew Yin be? The opposite of Andrew Yang. Well, yeah, except for the one thing they both share in common: their first name, of course. The name Andrew. The name Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> But Andrew, if if Andrew Yang is for minimum basic income, clearly Andrew Yin is for no minimum wage. He's like an ultra capitalist, right? No minimum uh, wage. But no, he's he's the opposite of Andrew Yang. So, um, like, what are some bad Andrew Yang takes? Do you remember any bad takes that Andrew Yang had? Um, I I don't know. I think he's got some weird stuff about. I mean, I actually, I really don't know. I really have no idea. He probably has some bad takes. Everyone does. I, yeah, I only know him as that it's a credit to his branding that he's the UBI guy. That's my guy. He's believe. I want to give you a thousand neat bucks. Just play Call of Duty. Your government will give you money. You can spend it on Funko Pops. You can't eat it's a Funko, Funko Pop, Pop, but you vote. should be able to, right? 
<laughs> Why aren't they edible? Edible Funko Pops, but <laughs> that <laughs> the the siege of Stalingrad. We had to eat all of our our Funko Pops. <laughs> uh, but that's what it's gonna. That's what's gonna happen with these riots. Is there's gonna be city sieges, and all the Funko Pops will need to be boiled. There's gonna be like a famine. You think? Yes, we could there's have going to be there's going to be like a, a siege of Leningrad famine. Oh god! Uh, because we're, all the cities will uh, board up and they'll they'll become walled cities again. Yeah, well that's why and it's going to start with Atlanta. That's why we keep buying pets, um, at least in my household, just in case there ever is a famine. You know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. You got you have three cats now. I mean, Ramona alone. Uh, could destroy any intruder. I would not. I don't. I, yeah. I, I would. That's the thing about having an insane fighting cat. Well, I, is I meant that it's we would better eat, protection than my fucking dog. I meant that we would eat them, not that, <laughs> not that they're protection. Uh, oh, <laughs> no. I would. I would. Ramona for protection is pretty good. It, if you, I guess the listeners aren't aware of. Describe your cat to the <laughs> listeners. Uh, Mike, I have a little. A ninja attack cat named Ramona after Ramona Quimby of the the books Beezus and Ramona and she uh, hates all humans except for me and potentially Caitlin but you know who knows? <laughs> uh, Ramona even kind of hates me a little uh, bit yeah you know Just you you bit. you feed her and that's enough but yeah she is a she will attack anything and evade any attempt to stop the attack more importantly so that she can just the death by a thousand cuts is very prevalent with her yeah <clears throat> well she grew up with a bunch of lunatics what can so, i say so you got her from a you got her from a, nar- a nasty trailer park not like a cuz there are very nice wholesome trailer parks this was not yeah. one of them that was a ruse though that was just the ruse that i told you guys i got her from a narco traficante and he was breeding <laughs> he was breeding leopards and he told me he was breeding miniature leopards and uh so actually ramona is a miniature south american black panther that's pretty and cool. when i say black i i mean like uh she's like you know the animal in the South American genre. <laughs> no, she's a miniature Chadwick Boseman. Uh, <laughs> so what's been... Chadwick Boseman's mm-hmm. name is Chadwick. <laughs> His name is Chadwick. Chadwick's a good name. That's... And people don't question it. <laughs> people are just like, oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, Chadwick. Hmm, hello, Chadwick. Let us go to the... Let us go to the beach... Today and fondle each other's man pussies. Who is this guy, Chadwick? I'm not. I don't know who he is. Chadwick. He's Black Panther. From when, though? He's Black Panther in the popular Marvel series of movies, Black Panther. Really? No way. He's Chadwick. He's Chadwick Boseman. I, I, who is he's, he in he, Black Panther? The, is he like uh, the main guy? He is. Uh, He's Jack Panther. He he is hard boiled detective Jack Panther. Okay, and he's searching for the Black Panther. Could because uh, the Black Panther's gone missing. And could it be that they're actually one and the same? <laughs> yeah, it turns out. Yeah, amnesia. You know. Every time I go looking for this guy, I can't find him. <laughs> <laughs> you ever noticed that Jack Panther and Black Panther are never in the same room? <laughs> It's a real mystery. And, okay, yeah, and obviously the name is Noir Panther. There you go. It all comes full circle. Uh, I guess, yeah, in the Black Panther movie, he does stop a, a, a sex trafficking ring right in the opening scene. So that's a, implied. He is doing that. So it could have some some dark noir themes to it where he gets in deep with this really... Uh, <laughs> really nasty uh sex cult nah they wouldn't do that in a marvel movie they wouldn't do a sex cult in a marvel movie marvel's gonna have to come up with something you know 
they've been trying to make uh, movies that'll captivate America, and then along comes DC with Joker, and lo and behold, everyone's emulating Joker and not emulating Ant Man. <laughs> yeah, everyone's everyone's become Joker fun. Become Ant Man. That, that's what's funny about the. I I want to be Ant Man if I those movies are fun. <laughs> he goes real small. Everybody Dikes are big. Get real small. <laughs> Everyone, make a Hello Kitty Pez dispenser real big and throw it out a window, and that's the best shot in the movie. So we put it in the trailer, and it's the only fun thing. Tim Heidecker is in that movie, uh, uh, which is funny. And also the other funny uh, uh, fucking Neil Hamburger is in the first Ant Man movie. Which is also very funny. Neil Hamburger? <laughs> yeah, Neil Hamburger has a cameo appearance in the first Ant-Man movie. He's Paul Rudd's obnoxious boss in, in the first uh, in the first act where, ah, oh, down on his luck Ant-Man, he, before he's Ant-Man, you know, he's being, he's being reamed over by his uh, uh, Neil Hamburger boss. Oh, you mean the actor? And the people in the know. The actor ch- is named Chadwick the actor, Boseman. What's his, it, okay. Yeah. That's a fine name. I don't uh, know what you're talking about. That's a fine yes, name. Yes, yeah. Neil Hamburger's real name is Chadwick Boseman. It is a fine name, but it's his name is Chadwick. That's that's a very... And that's not even... Because this is not even to say the trope, the key and peel trope of uh, black people have funny names. This is Chadwick is a funny white name that a, a funny that, that a black guy has. I guess so. You don't normally associate Chadwick with black people, is what I'm saying. I don't think you normally hear the name Chadwick with any anybody. I don't think it's just a very common name at all. I guess it could be associated with white. I whiteness. knew. But I don't know. I, I haven't really heard of. I guess you're right. I'm I'm assuming. I guess because I did have. To there Chad. were a lot of. Mm-hmm. 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 Did you know a Chad growing up ever? I knew a Chase, but not a Chad. <laughs> Chase is much cooler than Chad. Yeah, in my opinion, you're really going somewhere when you got your name Chase. You know. Chase. You're on yeah. the move. That guy. Yeah, that guy. He's on that the That guy. Move. He's always in motion. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Oh, mm. hey. Diego, I will destroy you. Diego, stop getting your dick sucked by puppies. I think he wants uh, I think he wants a little more of that action, you know? <laughs> he's jonesing. He's jonesing. He's, he's had the taste. He's fallen in love. You can't fall in love with him, Diego. No kissing on the mouth. <laughs> Just kissing on the balls. Oh my! <laughs> there, there are people outside my apartment discussing things, and that is why Diego is reacting in such a way. Well, that is why he is roofing like a roofer. This is the dog part of the podcast, everyone. This is this is this was already a pet themed podcast, so I will now have the dog symphony in the background. Diego. I created you, and I could destroy you. You know what's a good there pet? There you go. He's calmed down now. You know what's a good pet? Frogs. Which? Frogs. <laughs> little frogs. Little yeah. St- just little stinky little frogs that their legs fall off, and they try to eat crickets, and the the crickets outsmart them, so they die. Just like frogs are cool. They are cool, and they're fragile, and that's why they're the bellwethers of the ecosystem, because they have such a narrow uh, range of homeostasis that uh, any slight shift of temperature or, like, water pH destroys them. Really? So, uh, Mm. it's, yeah, that's why, uh, that's a... that was like one of the crazy thing I I remember from a Jordan Peterson lecture, so... um, (laughs) <laughs> when I was just watching Jordan Peters lectures for no reason. Uh, so in, in indigenous cultures, the frog is seen as like a harbinger of, of doom, uh, specifically because of the frog's ability to predict changes in the ecosystem. You'll Sometimes you'll just see massive fields of frogs that have died and know that um, 
the area has changed forever. The land has become blighted in some way. It's not as fertile as it once was. Uh, something has changed. And um, this and thus became the basis for um, the indigenous uh, uh, association of frogs as harbingers of doom. And Jordan Peterson, ding, ding, ding. who had become wise to his... Uh, his association with Kermit the Frog. He says, people have been telling me that I am sound like Kermit the Frog. And what I will say to them, because Jordan Peterson also has, he will have, he has a totem pole in the background of all of his videos because he wants to borrow legitimacy from uh, the mysticism of indigenous people. He'll say, oh, indigenous people uh, often saw frogs as harbingers of doom. So I take... My association with Kermit the Frog is a harbinger of doom. And I never forgot that because that seemed just such like a weird collision of lots of parts of, of culture. Yeah. And uh, it always stuck in my head as something bizarre. I love cherry the cherry picking of symbolism that he does. I mean, if w what the harbinger yeah. of doom is, is the fact that now our Kermit the Frog is nowhere to be found. And we've been abandoned by him. <laughs> but, you know, wait, Do you have any more news on Peterson? I watch? do indeed, actually. So, uh, recently it was Dr. <laughs> Peterson's birthday, and his daughter, who is now his spokesperson, posted an old picture of them together in a restaurant as the happy birthday message. Extremely disconcerting. Because using an old picture means there are no new pictures to use. Where is Dr. Peterson? This is my question. Will I find an answer? Where? <laughs> this is just going to become a podcast about searching for Jordan Peterson. I think it might be, dude. I got some. I got. I got some likes on Twitter, which I normally don't. <laughs> um, of my uh, <laughs> of my my brief summary of what I know about his whereabouts, which is that no one knows anything about his whereabouts and it's extremely suspicious. So, hmm. I don't know. I mean, if he doesn't what show do up by think... January, then we'll know something's wrong. Do you think Mikayla has anything to do with uh, <laughs> it, uh, yeah. her father's disappearance? Do you think do. maybe she's stowing him away and extracting his blood uh, for power or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. I think she's involved. But I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know to what extent. Um, I just hope he's okay. What are the competing theories? That I mean, he died and that they have just yet to reveal it. I think that, that's one of them, right? Yeah. Another theory is that he could just be extremely sick. Mm -hmm. Another theory, I mean, he... He he's, said as much. He said he was recovering from benzos in his last, like, public statement. Right. Well, but let's let's just look at the facts. He went to Russia and disappeared. So let's start from there with a, with a clean <laughs> slate on what we think might have happened. Could he be starting a cult? Could he actually be starting a cult? And this is, like, sort of his young pope style maneuver where he's like trying to become extremely inaccessible and then make himself more attractive to a um you know intense <laughs> followers i think that could be one thing it could just be part of a con but it is it is fascinating i what if he like met his gay partner he just i met an irresistible man named yuri <laughs> and i thought Damn the system. I want to be with Yuri. I want to hold hands and stroke and massage his penis in public. And by God, I did it. And they put me away for my love of a man. <laughs> you see, men are the source of light. <laughs> oh, man. Jordan Peterson becoming, like, <laughs> a really misogynistic gay man would make a hell of a lot of sense. Yeah. Maybe that's why uh, his daughter's keeping him holed up for herself. Because she's obviously in love with her own father. Oh, man. An Electra complex you're talking about. Mm. The reverse Oedipus. Oh, yes. 
the Electra. <laughs> the Virgin Oedipus versus the Chad Electra. uh michaela is a chad electra absolutely yeah all of those all of those the barstool sports ladies chad electras oh that's who they are massive electras yeah did you check them out i did not check them out but i saw their their i photograph on itunes and it looks like um it just looks like a bunch of eliza schlesinger's or like um or like maybe smarter versions of Nicole Arbor, but it's easy to be smarter. Like blondes mean I'm not like the other girls, ladies. You know. I'd like uh, to take a, just a quick uh, little pause maybe, here, just because you mentioned iTunes. If everyone listening could like and rate us on iTunes, be great. Just be great. Yeah. Just be great. Yeah. Shilling. We're shillbillies. No. <laughs> review us on no. iTunes. That would be great. Five stars. Six stars. Seven stars. Seven stars. Put more Seven stars, stars, stars. Than, than you've ever put. So The fault in our stars, you can't give more than five stars. That, that is the fault in our stars. That's the part where... That's the part... I'm just getting everyone used to when we, when we get sponsors... We start having to do reads in the uh, in the episodes about like you know some... uh, vanilla tums <laughs> right vanilla tums <laughs> we are sponsored by th- can you look up vanilla tums to see it if it exists uh I mean I could because I can't I cannot why well, can't I you? don't have my computer capabilities uh. because uh, ev- I, uh everything in front of me is just all fiddle faddle foo fiddle faddle uh I I require your organizational skills. Oh, so- did you see this shit about? I'll get. I'll Google it. I'll Google vanilla tums. But did you see this guy? This guy Chuck Wendig. Yeah, Chuck Wendig. Man, he, everyone's beating up on him. So he's some sort of innocuous author that like writes uh, Star Wars books. He's like a D tier Joss Whedon, and uh, he is also involved in destroying the Internet Archive now. Yes. He is my least favorite guy of the month on the internet because of the way he writes. He Chuck writes Wendig, like, donkey of the month. He writes like what you were saying, like fiddle faddle foo, but seriously. Like that's his serious writing style, <laughs> style all the time. And he got a really great internet resource taken off uh, the internet because no one was stealing his books. And I, my guess is he needed an excuse <laughs> to his publisher to be why his books weren't on sale, or I'm sorry, weren't selling, is that, uh, oh, the piracy. But the Internet Archive is an invaluable resource that we may not have because of this entitled goon. People don't fucking steal books. That's why everyone bought Steal This Book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I'm sorry I made myself laugh. Yeah, Chuck Wendig is a real fucking piece of shit. Yep. Really makes me mad. In term that is actual anti free speech. If you're talking about uh all you fucking free speech warriors out there, fucking uh, do- if you need to dox anyone, stop doxing trans people and dox Chuck Wendig. Dude, so I I was saying anti Chuck Wendig stuff and then someone's response to me is like, "Well, if information should be free, then just give me your credit card number." And my so I was like, "Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure my credit card number is already give all me o- yours. It's all over the internet. All of our credit card numbers are already all <laughs> over the internet." If you wanted to go to the place where their credit card numbers, you could just type in some website that ends in .ru and get everyone's credit card number. Go at it, dude. And then they were like, well, uh, how am I going to make money writing Star Wars fan fiction? And so I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry it's threatening your livelihoods. But, like, you can also choose not to, not to digitize your book. Musicians don't have that option. All we can do is only play live music and request that people don't record it. You know? Like, but when people write, mm-hmm. like, they don't have to put a digital copy up.
They could publish. They could only do hard copies is what you're saying. That is, uniquely, they have the option of doing that. They do until optical character recognition becomes viable as a technology, but it's t it's been 40 years since, like, it's crazy, because the technology for this has b basically stopped and came to a standstill. OCR, or optical character recognition, is extremely difficult. Like, the only hope we have is the AI neural network getting slowly better at it over time, but it's going to take years still. So if you just publish your book... Yeah, they're... The only way someone can steal it is by Xeroxing it, which has been a thing for, for 70 years, basically. M longer. Mimeographs. So they have, no, they have absolutely no, no point to complain about their livelihoods being taken away from them when musicians have had to deal with this for, like, twice the amount of time. Yes, but you see, authors are more important to society than musicians because they are the ones that read the Star Wars fan fiction. Yeah, I guess how... They are the creators of dreams. How will I know what Luke's grandkids did? <laughs> oh, no, Luke's grandkids. Shio and Bully. And, oh, no, one has the Force and the other doesn't. And they become jealous, but Bully works harder and uh, becomes proficient in uh, jet fighting. Whereas uh, Shia, oh, no, he goes off into the woods and becomes a gad about. See, it's easy. I can write this shit. People will buy this shit. <laughs> Fuck you, Chuck Wendig. I don't think I could be, I don't think I could be around. Fuck you and your mama's cunt. Any adult who talks about Star Wars, I could not be around them, I don't think. From, like, post-pandemic post friends, if any of you guys like Star Wars, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> I like Star Wars. Sorry. I still like the first two movies. Nope, you're gone. <laughs> Am I going to have beef now with They're our good. upcoming guests? I can watch them anytime. <laughs> I don't give a shit about the Star Wars Expanded Universe. No, that's not true. I think the Star Wars Expanded Universe is fucking hilarious and absolutely deserving of, like, a pouring over. It's just so vast and weird because it's all of these uh, non-canon takes from various different weird nerd authors putting their own personal fetishes into their star wars mold yeah and uh so yeah i think uh there's a lot of really great other sci-fi <laughs> out there so i just uh, i feel like you're if they're focusing on the popcorn lit version of sci-fi i like harder sci-fi oh harder deeper yeah. sci-fi harder <laughs> Uh, fucking recommend to these plebs. What's a, give them a book? Give them a book. Well, all of uh, I would start with the Martian Chronicles by Philip K. Dick. That is Hell yeah. awesome. Give it. Give me a synopsis. Give me a short synopsis it's for about, the doubters. It's about a, a person who has autism and is living in a Martian colony and is going insane. That sounds of like an extremely relatable experience to everyone that liked the music of My Chemical Romance. Um, I think we almost hit upon Ooh, a really... I'm autistic. Go to... Wait, I want to go back to Jesse Ventura doing Daft Punk. Because that was... <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't linger on that. <laughs> Hard. Harder, better, faster, stronger. <laughs> and then do Brother at the end. Ding, ding. Indeed. Harder, better, faster, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stupid. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, harder, better, faster, brother. That's very homoerotic. That, uh, that would also be a great campaign slogan for Jesse Ventura. For his, he should be president. He should be the next Democratic president. Uh, he is a little wacky. He's a wackadoo. He's he. This is the age we live in now. There can never be a normal president again. We can't go back to Obama. He's the most normal president. I guess he's not the most normal president, but he's like this. He's this, uh, almost like this 
avatar. People collectively imagined Obama into existence as this completely neutral, scandalous, uh, nice-talking, uh, completely inoffensive person. Uh, and he was sort of the last gasp of that. They they wasted all of that goodwill, lib, civility energy creating the Obama tulpa, and now all we have is is the pure crassness on which America was founded, and that can only be embodied by the body, Jesse Ventura. I have an update on the flavored Tums. Only Tums flavors are, <gasps> unfortunately, peppermint and fruit. But we have Mylanta liquid maximum strength formula vanilla caramel form uh, flavor. So if you get the Mylanta antacid liquid, they have vanilla caramel, which I am going to start substituting half and half with this Mylanta <laughs> vanilla caramel flavor uh, maximum strength uh, antacid relief. It's only $7. Please order some and review it next episode. Yeah, okay. Because uh, um, I am very curious about this. I will put it directly into my coffee. I'm putting it into my cart on Amazon. Jeff Bezos is going to personally bring it to my house because I got Amazon Prime. That's how it works. That's why he's a billionaire. Bezos is Jesus. That's right. Who? <sighs> Oh my god, wow. I am so curious about this Because if this exists, that means The proof of concept for vanilla Tums Because vanilla is not acidic uh, Neither is caramel Right You could uh, You could you, you could, You're entering a whole new level of antacids right here I feel the like truly pop in antacids like candies I think antacids are one of the most highly purchased items in uh, American supermarkets, I all I everyone's cart. If you look over in them, will have antacids in them. It's very interesting. Yeah, they're necessary for the American diet. That's the only way to go. Dude, I had a I had an X-ray nurse conspiratorially tell me that she thinks they're putting something in the food because we were both talking about how we needed so many so many antacids, and she was like, "I haven't changed what I was eating, but now I need a whole bunch of antacids." And, you know, I wanted to be like, maybe it's because you're getting older, but no, uh, it's because they're putting something in the food. I don't know who they are, but and I guess they're just putting acid in the food. <laughs> the acid lobby. <laughs> the acid people. The, the calcium lobby. They're injecting, they're injecting uh, chicken breasts with citric acid. <laughs> so it's, I don't know, they're giving you the coffee lobby and the Tums lobby. It's vertically integrated. The coffee companies control the Tums companies. You get addicted to the coffee because of the caffeine. You get a, uh, you get the horrible heartburn. You got to get the Tums. Uh, the Tums are chalky, so you got to get the vanilla Tums, which costs a little more. <laughs> so I uh, uh, I made man. some pot brownies again using um, already vaped weed. And again, great. They are. How did they turn out? They are extremely strong. Um, I forgot to eat mm. one today. I should have had one today because I only have one left. But that's how I recommend doing it. And it kind of, it works. You just vape your weed and save it and then throw it all into brownie mix after a month. And then you got, you know, basically free pot brownies that will kick your ass if you're not careful. If you, if you eat them before work's over, be careful. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, you're, you're upcycling your vaped weed. Don't throw that shit out. Don't put baby in a corner. Eat that shit. Yeah, no, it is, it is a little gross, actually, though. If I'm going to be 100% honest, okay. there are, if you, you got to be careful to, to just make sure you don't use too many stems in your weed because they don't disintegrate. And if you use a lot of stems and then you, <laughs> and then you put that directly into brownie mix, you're going to have, be picking stems out of your teeth so um the, what is yeah. give me your do you just use a brownie mix to put an egg in the brownie mix do you there's do directions you on the box with anything you, do you, you add more butter no you follow the directions okay. on the box and add an ounce of vaped weed and it will be great but you'll also be eating straight vaped weed baked into brownie mix no there's no way around it 
Does it taste a little grassy? Uh, yeah, it does. Okay, there you go. So you're not making you're not making the high end. I can't even tell there's pot in this pot brownies. No, no, I'm making these brownies are like wait. The, you're not making can of butter. You're just dumping vaped weed into brownie mix. Correct, and it works. It works. That's great. incredible. It that's, works great. <laughs> that's because you're. That is a low rent method, my friend. Hell, but I appreciate it. Yes, that's why I advise everyone to do it. Because there's no ex, There's no step. There's no extra step. You're already decarboxylating it when you're vaping it, so it's ready to be consumed. I could just eat the stuff if I could stomach it. You have to just put it into a mechanism to eat it. It's like making firecrackers. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, firecrackers are when you you put va- weed in graham crackers? You put weed in s'mores? Um, well, you can put it in any cracker, and then you bake it in the oven for 20 minutes to activate it, and then it activates and binds to the butter on the peanut butter. Oh, okay. And then you yeah. can eat it, and then uh, I think I saw that on Broad City. Yeah, I mean the thing is, when you're eating your weed, it's not generally as satisfying. <laughs> you're just straight eating. No, your weed. it. Um, well, the reason why I love smoking is because it literally fills up the hole inside you for the briefest of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you got to switch to vaping. Ah, I feel so full. You got to switch to vaping. You're right. I'm 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 throwing up more than ever. You should get the vape that I have. It's it's made in Canada, so it'll come to you quick. And then they're they're really good with customer service. <laughs> I don't know if it works like that. And it's not I'm not throwing up more than ever, actually. I'm throwing up at the regular amount I usually oh, okay. throw up. Yeah, once a day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's, 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 some of that's the weed. I think more of that's just the anxiety of, oh, is this the day that I'll get run over? Do you mean run over figuratively? Or like run, hit in the street? No, well, I, I, no, I just have that lingering paranoia that this is the, this is going to be the day that I die for sure. Oh, well, you can't think like that. No, I mean, I don't think like that. Oh. I I have actively taken steps in therapy and medicine to not think like that. But that is that is my default mode, which is why uh, I, I puke a lot. <laughs> well, I think vaping might help. Just, you know, a, a, a base level of existential exit. Vaping might help, you're right. Uh, but I th- doesn't everyone live with a base level of intense ex- ex- existential anxiety? Yes, but not everyone. <laughs> not everyone's um, coughing so much in the morning from from like leftover bong smoke that I I think that's what's triggering the morning uh, the morning episodes, frankly. But I think what's triggering the morning episodes is uh, having to go to work and do my job that could and be it too. where i'm afraid that my performance will be evaluated poorly and that i will be uh kicked out onto the street and that i will become homeless like the people who i talk to in the dog park at night mm, don't let me know if that happens i catastrophize i'm a catastrophize i mean this is not obviously what i am saying is worst case scenario i'm usually very far from these uh bouts of anxiety uh, insanity but you know i think most people live with this uh, well yeah i don't it's it's the most common mental illness everyone has this sort of deep avi- abiding catastrophizing fear in them not everyone but a lot of people and uh it can uh, make it can make mornings hard yeah well, try. You got You won't know unless you switch things up. I suggest trying to vape. See if that helps. <laughs> Maybe I, I'll I'll just eat vaped weed brownies. Yeah, that'll help. That'll yeah. definitely help. But maybe maybe I'll just stop smoking. Maybe I'll be sober. Maybe I'll be one of those sober guys. Well, I mean, I think that would probably be a easy way to test if if it's 
if it's weed that's contributing at all, that would be an easy way. And there's, you know, you can always go back to doing it. Well, I, no, I already know that because when I started up Prozac, I quit weed for a month in order for the Prozac to work. Uh Uh-huh, as you do. And I, yes. Well, you do because, like, the weed interferes, because Prozac, uh, did you ever, because I know you're not on any antidepressants right now. Uh, but did you ever come up on an antidepressant? You know how for the first month it doesn't work, and then all of a sudden it starts working if you if you give it a while? I had a very weird experience with them because I was heavily using as many substances as I could get my hands on while being on antidepressants. So I don't know. That's not the recommended... That's not uh, the right way to do it. It's not the recommended usage. It, I mean, it kind of worked. Yeah. Uh, sort of. Except now all I do is weed. So I guess that's, yeah, that's, it means it worked. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, yeah, when I was uh, first doing the whole antidepressant thing, um, I quit weed because the doctor said weed sort of fucks up the serotonin mechanism by which I don't know how it works, but it does anyway. And, uh, it's just three weeks of symptoms. It, it actually makes you more nauseous at first. So it's so taking the antidepressant. So it's actually probably a bad control situation. Uh-huh. What I should really do is, but it is not take the antidepressant because Prozac does make you nauseous. It's just what it does. All of the SSRIs do. So that's probably contributing to it as well. When do you so, t- when do you take it? But yeah, I should switch to vaping in the morning. Hmm. Maybe take it at night. Try Maybe I'll take yeah, it. At try night. taking it I at night. I don't know. I probably just smoke too many bongs. Um, smoke too many bongs. I, it's clear that I do. I, not not necessarily. I mean, you know, it could be any different number of things, but you can try to switch things up to experiment to see if it helps in any way, and then figure out what you think the reason is. You know. Uh, but what I can say is I, I can absolutely say that, uh, Prozac, I'm not recommending it generally cause SSRIs are, but it killed my suicidal ideation. It made my <laughs> suicidal ideation commit suicide. Damn. Uh, so SSRIs can work They're It's, it's, it is luck, very luck based, but I'm saying there's hope for people. Is what I'm saying. That's why I w- I'm being very frank about this experience. I was reading that multiple personality disorder stopped being so prevalent after psychiatrists stopped suggesting it as a potential diagnosis. <laughs> yeah. You think people were tricked into having uh, multiple personalities they, by just uh, power of suggestion? Well, I might. I think. I think. Depression is a lot more normal than uh, people realize. Right? How, what percentage of the population do you think could be considered clinically depressed if they were, like, honest about their feelings to a therapist? I, I think 35% of the population is going to be depressed all the time. Yeah, I, I'd I'd say that I'd say my percentage. I mean, we are both two depressed people, so maybe our biases are showing. But uh, right, non-depressed people, ch- check us. What percentages do you think uh, people are depressed? Well, Send us to the House of Decline at Gmail dot com. If uh, you do not yeah. have clinical depression, House of Decline at Gmail dot com. Yeah. There you go. Send your guesses of the population depression. Uh, House of Decline at gmail.com. Thank you. Our guess is 35%. Uh, that includes uh, all self reported and non self reported people. We're just guessing as to the people that live with depression but don't deal with it. <laughs> the lazy ones. <laughs> <laughs> They're not lazy. They're lazy. I mean, they deal with it, it's just with booze. That's how a lot of people deal with it, is just by social drinking. It's the most popular way to deal with your depression. Ooh, so much social drinking not happening, and then this has just been an explosion I've seen of pictures of people 
It's like filling the streets outside of bars. It's You're right. In Michigan, where... Because in America, I imagine... Uh, so, so shit started up again in Michigan. Huh? What do you mean, shit? You mean coronavirus? Like bars are open oh. in Michigan again? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going... I think, yeah. <laughs> I don't go anywhere. I've just seen... People are people good. Are, don't go anywhere. People are acting like it's over, and it's not over. <laughs> it's not good. Eye of the storm, baby. Yeah, don't leave your it's apartment. It's only gonna get worse. Don't leave, man. Don't go don't anywhere. Don't leave your apartment except for yeah. Invisible. Don't zombies. even go to the grocery store. God. Just hibernate. Inject yourself with uh, uh, some sort of uh, heroin thing. <laughs> yeah turns out fentanyl cures coronavirus <laughs> <laughs> that would be great <laughs> oh my god quick we gotta get the fentanyl manufacturers this makes up for all the ODs in the Midwest. All right. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to abolish the police and replace it with the buddy system. So pick your buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are responsible for your buddy. Okay. It's like a third, we're all third graders at the National mm -hmm. History Museum. I think we should do that. I think, but it needs to be uh, wealthy families taking in uh, poor families in what I will call the Webster or Different Strokes Initiative, because uh, that was that was like a trope of sitcoms where someone from a, a usually a young black person from the wrong side of the tracks gets taken in by a wealthy family. It happened in uh, Different Strokes. It happened in Webster. It happened in Fresh Prince of Bel Air, where the gag was uh, the wealthy kid was uh, the the poor kid was being adopted by a black a rich black family. Mm -hmm. But it's like a constant trope, and I think we need to take a cue from these visionary sitcoms and do the Webster Initiative or do the Will Smith Initiative. I don't care what we, we call it. You're right. Uh, but yeah, we have we have to start normalizing this. You mean we have. To normalizing the continuation of the traditions of television that we've had normalizing television tradition so what we <laughs> it happened in curb your enthusiasm as well uh, in curb your enthusiasm larry takes in uh the black family uh loretta vivica a fox and then leon just got popular with the fans and stayed around for no a stated reason how is it not already completely normalized you're right you're right. Maybe this is how reparations will happen. Mm. I don't know how they happen. <laughs> They're, it's complicated. Duh, but, I mean, it is. Reparations? Yeah, it's complicated. How you do them. I want to say I am officially pro-reparations. I don't know what yeah. form they should take, but, yeah, I mean, take, I, take a percentage of my income. I basically am pro uh, the opportunity to really do them got just fucked up. And so now it's just complicated, I guess. But I mean... I'm, when you say are, the opportunity, you mean in like the 60s when the foundations for this should have been laid, but oh, because of like NOM... I meant like how it never no, got like laid. reconstruction, like directly after. It, that was the time. Yeah. And, and that was the time when it would have right. been the most straightforward... Um, but with enough effort, it could be done today. But better minds than mine should figure out how to do it. Uh, so I would yield my time. Well, here at House of Decline, we are reparations experts. I am officially claiming us to be <laughs> okay. reparations experts. <coughs> no, we are not. Absolutely not. But, um... Do you think, obviously, the, the the idea that reparations should take the form of, like, a one-time cash settlement is a funny idea? I was thinking, because like... Because that is, like, the most basic... I, like, land might be a better thing? Give land? 
I mean, a lot of stuff would be... I, I think, like, the modern interpretation of what form reparation should take would be cash plus land plus infrastructure plus, like, yeah. uh, you know, health care and child care and all that and housing, uh, all that combined would be the big reparations package that we would put forth uh and if we were to if we were to do it legit styles but i think that that's the thing is like when most people think of reparations when and like when your average dumb dumb thinks of it they think of the Chappelle show sketch where every black person just gets a hundred thousand dollars and that's it (laughs) well i think that's why a lot of people have sort of a weird a weird image of it. I mean, that's pretty much... Or they much, think it is ridiculous. That's pretty much all the government, like, can coordinate in terms of a response these days anyway. So that's probably mm-hmm. all I would expect. Um, but, you know, maybe we'll maybe we will create a better government someday. I like the idea of going back to the 13 colonies where... <laughs> All the white people can live in the area that was the 13 colonies. And then it's just... Oh, no. The rest of America's up for grabs. <laughs> sure. Sure. Are we hilarious? Uh, what do you know about the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone? The Chaz? <laughs> you talking Chaz? The Chaz. You talking Chaz? Is that, the Chaz has been in the news. You talking Chaz to Chaswick me? Chaswick Bozeman. You talking Chaz to me. I'm talking Chaz, Chaz to you. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. I'm talking Chaz to you. You talking Chaz? Chaz Palmentieri? Famous character actor? Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone Palmentieri? I mean, I have no problems whatsoever with the, uh, uh, with the auto zone. I'm 100% pro auto zone. <laughs> auto zone is great. We are... Pro AutoZone. I mean, I hope we they don't. Yeah, I mean, I hope, I hope they don't burn it down. I bet they. I bet that right now the police <laughs> are sending in people to burn that, that burn that shit down. The police are probably sending people in right now. But you see, the Asian provocateur, they're very confused right now because their instructions were to only burn down uh, symbols of capitalism. So they can't burn down an. Uh, paradoxically, they can't burn down an anarchist sect, but they can burn down a Wendy's. I mean, it, the communists and the anarchists have to get along, okay? <laughs> we got to figure out a way for them to get along. Uh, it is clearly through the anarcho-communists. Yeah. The pussies. I think everybody needs Choose to... Choose a side, anarcho-communists. Yeah, well, we need to make sides, and then we have to adopt jerseys and colors, and then, you know, I guess we're red. <laughs> and then, um... <laughs> Anarcho-communists are the bisexuals of the left. Pick a side, pussies. <laughs> that's <laughs> no, that's not accurate. I myself am bisexual. It's also not accurate. I I am. It's very very inaccurate. It's almost as if I'm stupid. <laughs> <sighs> I I always wanted. You know how the colors um of anarchy and anti-fascism are unfortunately the same colors as fascism (laughs) which is red black and white (laughs) because everyone likes that color palette it's a great color palette the white stripes have it uh they are fascist and anti-fascist the white stripes simultaneously Mm -hmm. well yeah because they have two they have two Um, members i and you know who's who yes I mean, I have two members, but I don't go pulling my pants around, pulling down my pants, showing them to people, even though I'm very proud. You got two, huh? (laughs) Well, lucky you. (laughs) Just like the White Stripes, I got two members. Why don't you brag about it? Hey! All right, look at this guy over here. I'll brag some more. He's got two. (laughs) I have two members. One speaks in only truth, one speaks in only lies. The pee holes move. Hey, Ricky. As if talking. This guy, it is got, very deceptive. He's got two. What? He's, this guy's complaining. He's got two. You know? I'm lucky enough to have <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. Brother, can you spare a dick? <laughs> 
Oh my god. But yes, black, black, uh, white, and red are unfortunately the colors of both fascism and, and anti-fascism. But I like uh, pink, black, and white, which is the colors of gay anti-fascists. Okay, but so are, is, I, is Antifa is anarchist or not? What are, are they anarchist or are they not? Are they? Oh, are they not? They're n- they, uh, yes. They are both, because because many people can be Antifa. Many people can call themselves Antifa. So they're anarchist Antifa. They're communist. You know what are weird? Uh, Like Mitt Romney is Antifa. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Mitt Romney is now Antifa. Uh, But I I think there does exist a phenomena of uh, lib Antifa. You know, people that post the memes of, like, all the people that invaded on D-Day were Antifa. It's like, ah, oh, it's not really, uh, but your heart's... A- Winston Churchill, yeah, he was Antifa. You know what I'm starting to think more and more? You know what I'm starting to think more and more? No, he was fa. He was just counter-fa. I'm, tr- I'm starting to think more and more that this whole D-Day thing is just another Kubrick production. Just an, Whoa. just another, just another moon landing. This whole D Day thing. D Day was all for show. You're saying? Yeah. Whoa! Tell me more. That's interesting. Let's go into it, Joe Rogan styles. <laughs> what What is your evidence for saying that D Day is is a hoax? Well, they only got that one picture that you see of like that one that one like amphibious boat vehicle where they're all getting off and then yeah and it's the, clearly a matte painting the yeah. rest is just footage from that fucking tom hanks movie you know? <laughs> you're right all the <laughs> existing d-day footage we have is from saving private Ryan. Dude, i've watched the history channel for years now collecting every evidence of history <laughs> every scrap of history that i can <laughs> the one source they put it all up there they're the history channel uh-huh what can I say? I figured it out. I cracked and the code. Today. You cracked the code of today. What? <laughs> you put two and two together for today. Dude, I was talking to my dad, and he was like, uh, he was like, yeah. Well, when we were in France, they had bidets, but they were just for the women. <laughs> no, they weren't. <laughs> oh. You could have used them. <laughs> He's so sad because he was told oh, he finally found out about the Japanese and the bidets and how they have like futuristic awesome bidets there. And he was like, "Have you seen the Japanese toilets where it aims at you? It aims, and you can control the temperature." He's not wrong. Americans do live in toilet poverty. Yeah, yeah. The the sitting toy Americans and Canadians too. We have the same bad toilet culture. That's I. We have the worst toilet culture. Although the the in people in Denmark are a little worse, the Denmark toilet culture is they have the shower they have the shower right above the toilet, so they have the toilet in the shower. Okay, and the whole bathroom is the shower. There's a drain at the bottom. They have like there's no shower. You just are supposed to like get your get yourself wet when you're shitting on the toilet and take off all your clothes every time, and it's insane. They're insane. Uh, you know what's the stupidest? Uh, that that just reminds me of you know how uh fucking redneck, not even rednecks, but uh, right wing people will, will mock Muslims for like using a bidet mm-hmm. because they use their hand to wipe their ass. Yeah, with soap and water, you shitheads. And it's, instead, what do we do? We just have this incredibly dry paper that we drag across our assholes that never gets anything clean. That just and it sticks little pieces of paper stick to your asshole and make him itch all day. So you you have to you just you have a fucking itchy asshole all day because we don't have publicly available bidets because for some reason we think putting our hands on our asses with soap and water to fucking clean out the shit is beneath us when every other culture has figured it out. Yeah, we need to start a revolution, brother. Yeah. Bidet revolution. Let's get out it's, there. It's not today. Let's get out it's there and bidet. make our cause known. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you know oh, why I'm out man. here. Fucking. <laughs> 
It's B Day. We'll storm. We'll storm uh, the shores of uh, who are the fucking toilet manufacturers? It's B Day. Big toilet. We'll storm the shores of Big Toilet. We're talking about B Day. Yeah, very much so. It's we'll parachute in. It's pronounced to Big Toilet. Day. It's pronounced Baday. Okay. Yes. Not B Day. Baday. This is our own B Day. Yeah. Day. June sixth. 2020. <laughs> it's my daddy was at D Day. He's a Daday. <laughs> my Daday. He's very old. Dwight Eisenhower's my Daday. Back when we were jitterbugging, that's what we used to call it syphilis. <laughs> Did you see they put a box over Churchill? <laughs> He's not a box. <laughs> They're taking, <laughs> they're taking down Churchill statues, right? Because he wanted to kill all Indians. Yeah, it's very reasonable. <laughs> Good. People are like, okay, so I yeah I I want to mm-hmm. yeah. No, you go, you go, you go. Well, people are like, why, why do you want to uh, tear down the statue of Winston Churchill? And then you say you have to like say one to two sentences to explain why, and most people are like, oh okay, yeah, take that shit down. <laughs> oh yeah word he was bad at war and then he wanted to kill all indians okay yeah okay let's let's take her down boys bad bad prime minister actually yeah yeah i'm not exactly sure why the guy that had uh general montgomery and operation market garden should be revered as worthy of a statue he's not a military genius yes he was just like the only one who was like, we're going to get through this and stick together. Everyone else was just shitting yes. their pants. So I guess he's good for that. But and it, Prince said that. <laughs> <laughs> and it can also not be understated that he, he basically exclaimed that he wanted to subjugate India and take back, create the Raj again. <laughs> you know? Remember the old days when you could just... Shovel Indian men into a fire, and you can watch it burn, and have a whiskey on the beach. That is what I. That is the sun shall never set on old Mother England. Suck my dick. Yeah, he's just losing. He lost the English Empire. So, I mean, good one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and who else are they taking them? They took down that uh, all the all the slave owners, all the slave traders that also happened to be English nobles in Michigan. In La- Coventry, <laughs> they're taken down. <laughs> it's funny they're from the West Country, you know. So oh, we're trading these slaves, and we're also making a mint and getting in with the coin. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's that's very bad. Uh, in Michigan, they're uh, taken down the. A statue of Custer, General Custer. <laughs> That's pretty good. He killed a lot of uh, indigenous people. Yeah, the weird thing about Custer should though, probably take that guy down. The weird thing about Custer though is that he was he fought for the Union, and was a hero in the Civil War. <laughs> and so he, uh, but then of course went huh. on to kill a bunch of native people, and then himself was slaughtered and, had, and scalped by native people so that one's a little complicated yeah well do you think he already received the karmic justice i mean he's just one death in exchange for his like he really shouldered the responsibility for a lot of indigenous death as well right, he, he is, had the deci- executive decision making capacity we need a statue he was the decider on <laughs> we need a statue of him being slaughtered <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, a statue of Custer being scalped. Everyone wins. You get a statue of Custer. Yeah. <laughs> you racists get a statue of Custer. Indigenous people get a statue of them uh, victoring over Custer. Yeah, let's commission that one. That would be cool. That would be hella cool because it's an actual historical event that everyone loves. <laughs> the battle of <laughs> not yeah. everyone. That I would mean... be controversial. The Confeder- like the Confederates that uh, taught me history laughed about Little Bighorn, and now I understand why. <laughs> I understand. I, I was because when I read it, I was like, "This is horrible," 
in like grade school learning about it and then everyone around me was like giggling and i'm now i think i know why because because he was a he was a member of the union fought for the union yeah the childhood game of cowboys and indians is the most sinister shit on earth mm-hmm. it is the normalization of genocide for children where the indians literally it's profession versus race of people <laughs> all right we got cops and robbers Such a monstrous game we got cops and robbers and we got cowboys and indians there you go right from the beginning you are told how to participate you are told your normative roles in society who is bad and who is good because i played cowboys and indians that shit is from the 50s and i played that when i was six years old i remember playing fucking cowboys and indians when i was like that that's some of the few things i remember are the various un-PC things I did when I was a child. Yeah. And I remember them. I remember doing... I remember being, like, seven years old and then making Chinese eyes as a Chinese person that's how, in my class. That's how and then being you. told why I shouldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember being told I That's should, what I remember from childhood. I remember being told I shouldn't chronically masturbate. Did I obey them? Hell no. <laughs> I just started doing it, you know, subversively. (laughs) Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me! Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me! He's jerking off. Those that died would justify! Hey, when you go to Catholic Catholic school, jerking off is rebellion. (laughs) See, that's communication. That is a form of fluid communication. To yourself. It is a form of self-affirmation. They're telling me not to do this, but I'm going to do it. See, that's why Catholicism works, because it forbids the right stuff. It makes masturbation very sexy, because it makes it forbidden. Dude, yeah, I've been thinking about Catholicism a lot, because we've just been watching The Young Pope, which is great. Young Pope. Yeah, you made a Young Pope reference earlier. And I, oh. I, I see you've become enamored with the world of the show and want to live in it, don't you? No, I don't want to. I mean, it is this world, so it's just, you know. they. Ac- you are correct. <laughs> they accidentally elect a Pope with severe PTSD. <laughs> and it's very funny. The consequences are very funny. Mm-hmm. So it's just. Do you want to be the Jude Law character in Young Pope? Oh, totally. But I mean, you want to be like the the dead eyed power broker. Uh, well, no, he's not like that. He's got real vision, but he has severe PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's... I want to be James Cromwell. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to starting the new Pope. Uh, which has John Malkovich as the new Pope, I presume. But I uh, just finished watching... I am uh, the em- Pope now! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go ahead, do it. Everybody dance because John Malkovich is the Pope! <laughs> Listen to the way that I enunciate these words as the Pope. Ex prio facto ex victim... Me priori facti. That is what the Pope explains. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. John Malkovich is a G. Oh and then God. there's the two. Is the two popes related to that franchise, or is that a different pope separate, thing altogether? Separate franchise. Separate. Ah, oh, shit. There's a lot of pope media going on. Yeah, the two popes is more based on reality. It's based on how we are in the unprecedented situation of having a retired pope and an active pope. And yes, because one guy couldn't take all the pedophile hate anymore, and <laughs> so he just was like, "I, I gotta get out. I'm t- who needs this shit? Uh, get someone who's more graceful. To get someone who looks less like a supervillain than me." Yeah, I mean that was crazy. But hey, you know, what can you do? Well, wasn't that the revelation Ratzinger was just painfully aware of what he looked like and how he appealed to people and what his role in the Catholic Church was? I, he did have this meta-awareness of him being this just punching bag? I don't know. I, that, th- mm. I mean, I've... The thing about popes is that they're just not compelling. And that's part, that's part of why I like the young <laughs> pope so much, because it was 
having this, you know, formally compelling historical figure thrust back into the the role that it used yeah. to have, which is, uh, I like I like right. historical current distance. popes are not compelling. What's that? Current popes are not compelling, right. but like Medici popes are nuts. Well, yeah, that's I like the historical dissonance in TV shows uh, play with that, but yeah, I don't know. Catholicism is um, un, it's a uh, you know so the young pope is like a guy who's PTSD makes him act like a medieval pope yeah basically he was abandoned by his parents <laughs> that's a pretty cool thing yeah he was abandoned by his parents so he is um, really upset all the time <laughs> and that's spoilers for young pope praise for young pope you know in disney movies when you're abandoned by your parents you can talk to animals and shit <laughs> yeah you get a special power snow, snow white has a lot of trauma they all have so much fucking trauma these fucking princesses snow white doesn't know her fucking parents her stepmother just tries to, hires a hitman to kill her and then she has to live, and you know, you know she's sucking dwarf dick. What? You know she's like not just cleaning the house. <laughs> you, you, they don't show that part in the kids' movie, but that is the implied exchange. She is being, you know, dude. What if that's why she likes dopey? What if Prince Charming finds she, out? The only one that doesn't. <laughs> Prince. <it's... laughs> Uh, Dude, Pris, Prince. I thought you were a virgin. Your name is Snow White. Prince. Well, you know, I. The, I was living at their house for free. They weren't just gonna let me stay there to clean. You know, and they're dwarves. They're horny. The prince is. Uh, he likes it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He wants to be cucked by the dwarves. You're saying? Oh yeah. He wants to watch. Mm-hmm. Or even take part. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, and Dopey's just freaking out in the corner going <laughs> They make Dopey watch. <laughs> oh god, that's abuse. Uh well this is a sick world that they don't we we're we're already living in a world where the stepmother is calling out the hit of her stepdaughter because she's prettier than her. <laughs> Which is some dirtbag shit. <laughs> that's fucking that's some trailer park killer joe ass shit who's ki killer joe <laughs> who's that oh uh, killer joe is a bad movie where matthew mcconaughey is this hitman uh where a a, a, a dirtbag family <laughs> hires him in order to collect a very meager life insurance policy on their mom <laughs> ten thousand dollars <laughs> It'll solve all my problems. Yeah, it, $10, is, that, no, it, is, it is like 50K. Oh, God. Yeah, but that's like the point of the movie. It's a small amount. Of, there's a lot of drama over a very small amount of money, which makes it all the more sad and horrifying. Wow. If I'm remembering it. I also remember it as being very bad, but during that era, era where Matthew McConaughey was getting all of these, getting all these roles, getting down Spires Club, getting mud. It's really good in mud. Bad. People like me in mud. <laughs> yeah. What is mud so he's about? Just getting a lot of plum rolls. God. I don't know. It, it, I feel it's the same as uh, the other movie that I was alluding to. It's just him as a grizzled guy, a variation of his true detective character, what? but not as compelling. Well, they can't do movies now. All we got is podcasts. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh no! Just podcast. the Matthew McConaughey cast. Yeah. Dude, I wonder... He's probably got a podcast, right? No, he's too he's too big for podcasts. The only people that... The only big celebrities that have podcasts are, like, Will Smith and other ones that want to dominate all forms of media as this uh, insatiable ego satisfaction machine. You think that um, the Scientologists are going to stage a comeback... Uh anytime soon i had to lay low for a little while but they didn't go anywhere are they powerful who do they have still a lot of a lot of people left they got kirsty alley still it's not really big they got tom they got tom, they got tom. still but he's yeah yeah but he's sort of um in the 90s tom cruise's association 
was it was Scientology was not downplayed because I guess in the 90s Scientology was a little more goofy and a, a little less sinister. Yeah. It was How sinister was Scientology in the 90s? They were not they didn't get sinister until the internet came around. It took the internet. I guess it was really the Scientology internet. was always bad but it didn't get it's it was miscavige which really rocketed scientology into the, the like the secret lynching territory right yeah i think i mean you know they did they infiltrated the irs before that right but i think with yeah. miscavige or whatever however is it miscavige i don't know miscavige miscavige i like it, david miscarriage <laughs> i always say as i he should that you know the one time that would have been a good thing would have been him or Hitler, but he's yeah. he's similar. He's similar. A lot of people. He's horrible. Actually. Mm-hmm. I wish you could just like that would be my uh, that would be my superpower is exchanging miscarriages uh, to different places in time. I could like take a mi- miscarriage and saying like yeah. no, I transfer you to Hitler's mom. Yeah, you would be sainted because a miscarriage. Yeah. That's the that's the most ethical way to kill baby Hitler. That, if you had that would power, you, you'd be if a saint. you could choose to miscarry baby Hitler, yeah. <laughs> you sh- if you prayed hard enough, you could do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the power of God. If you prayed hard enough, you could change the past, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you could do it if you prayed. And that would be my superhero name is Miss Carrier. <laughs> Wow. That would be a good superhero. Yeah. I would turn... I, my power would be turning invisible. S- you know, sneak into bathrooms. <laughs> that would be... that. That's a tight power. And you then can they... Look at, you could look at secret... Ban... Secret dicks. Then they just have to ban invisible people from bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, as a woman, feel unsafe with the lobby that says that invisible people can use bathrooms. All right, I think... I do not think... <laughs> I think to close out the show, we have to address the controversy that's on everyone's lips, like we close out every show, and that, of course, <clears throat> is J.K. Rowling. We have to talk about it. J.K. Rowling. Harry Potter and the Two Genders. <laughs> Did you read her... Uh, her uh, Sorry, not sorry. Apology she posted on her website. Yeah, it's a bunch of uh, very tired turf talking points. Yeah, she sucks. Just now. a very run of the mill turf shit. Not cool. Uh, very boring. I feel unsafe in these bathrooms. <laughs> Epidemic of Bugs Bunny rapists. <laughs> Bugs Bunny cross dressing rapists her, coming for me. Her, Every trans woman is Jessica Yaniv. Jessica Yaniv. Jessica Yaniv. Uh, I stand with lady who was fired uh, for comments that were to hurt her business, and she was fired. If you really, I don't know. She's she's a weirdin. She's a weirdin. J.K. Rowling. No good. The thing that bothers me, and also oh, just yeah. like no, you go. No, yeah. no, 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 you go. You were probably gonna say the thing I was gonna say. I don't think so. But. Okay, what a, I'm saying yeah. is she has a big stinky cunt. Oh. I, I was going to do <laughs> a more, get that I was gonna do a more cynical, c- sort of cynical take, sort of, but she's shitting on some of her like most dedicated fans, I really think, in a way that's really hurtful. And I think that, that sucks. I, I agree. Yeah, you're a little fucking weird kid. And the metaphor, the core metaphor of Harry Potter is wizards are special people, you know? People that don't necessarily fit in. People that have been undermined. Your core characters, Ron Weasley is a working class wizard, comes from a working class wizard family. Hermione is discriminated because she's a, a, a born of muggles. <laughs> Harry Potter is an orphan. He's born poor. Uh, and we all know that uh, uh, being an orphan uh, gives you PTSD yeah. and makes you a bad pope. Hell yeah. So, <laughs> so why would it make you a good wizard? Think about it if you had magical powers. <laughs> yeah. 
The young pope is just it Harry Potter. It just turns Potter. you into a wizard cop. <laughs> yeah. So the the core cast of Harry Potter are all outcasts. So every gay kid, every little weird kid, every trans kid just it identifies with these characters by virtue of the narrative you're you're talking about. And it says that what if by virtue of your difference you actually had power? Which is the, a power fantasy that literally everyone can relate to, which is why it's such a, a book that's beloved by uh, every gender and every demographic. It's just, even though these characters are, uh, like, for the most part, normative, cis, white, hetero people, people really love these books because that's the core narrative, is that even if you're weird, you know, maybe you're good because you're weird. Maybe you're powerful because you're weird. And to just shit on that. <laughs> to just totally shit all over that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, man. Great. Yeah. Great. Classic. Uh, 